Hello gainers and high level achievers. Ralphie here with some fitter philosophy, sharing the fitness and the philosophy with you, but not quite as proactively as I usually do because I am stuffied with a rhinovirus. In the real world, it's called a cold. A rhino, rhino is the medical reference for the nose, rhino. And in the world around us, gainers, we are surrounded by viruses, bacteria, and the constant risk of physical injury, whether it be cuts, bruises, sprains, uh, broken bones, and all the rest of it. Uh, but th the thing that we are usually exposed to that's beyond our control are viruses. Viruses are minuscule little living entities which are constantly attacking our body and in most occasions the body's military system of macrophages and neutrophils and dendritic cells and all the rest of it, T cells, this whole arsenal of weapons that our bodies have that we never even think about. It will go, go in and fight off these viral infections. It'll fight off bacterial infections. And when the body is physically injured, they will intervene and they'll cause swelling, bruising, grazing, clotting, all these little processes that help the body renew itself, recover and repair. But I want to focus this particular video on the cold. Uh, not to be confused with the flu and influenza. These are related. Uh, generally, they're more hostile, more aggressive, more dangerous. But our immune system is something that we take for granted. We know that to keep well, we should eat sensibly, get exercise, but one of the profound significant reasons for keeping well, it's not just to look good and to sleep well and to feel great and have something to talk about, it's actually to support the strength and the power in the body for quality of life. So that when colds and viruses and bacteria and injuries come along, we're better able to deal with them. And I want to focus I'll start with the rhinovirus, then I'm going to expand it as to really to highlight what we should do and what we should not do in life to undermine our, our, our wellness, r rather to support our wellness. And some of it's pretty obvious, but we're subject to social pressures, you see, and I want to discuss them. But we'll start with the rhinovirus. Here it is, little bastard. Uh, I mean, I've had this cold, and it usually comes in a certain time of year. In, in Northern Hemisphere, it's January, winter time. And um, people tend to kind of rush out to the chemist shop and get all sorts of medications to try and not so much cure the virus because you can't really do it. It's the body that does it. So we can't take drugs to do it. And far too many people are going to doctors for antibiotics, which don't work in viruses. So that is irresponsible and highly advisable not to, for the selfish reason that as and when we genuinely need antibiotics, the fewer we've taken, the more effective what we get will be. And that's a medical fact, it's a scientific fact, which is all, in our, all, all, all to our favour. But um, with the rhinovirus, this is, it will infect us over a few days. We get some few vague systems, vague symptoms, sore throat, stuffy nose, but it's not really dramatic. We're not thinking too much about it. So we tend to soldier on. Uh, the infectious stage is usually about two, three days. But after that, there is still a minimal risk of spreading the infection. And bear in mind that when we sneeze, when we touch objects, particularly door handles, the virus can continue to live and be active for up to three hours. 
So this is why viruses spread so quickly, because they're basically their dormant life out with their infected host is so long compared to many other viruses. Um, as regards supporting ourselves against this little critter, honey and lemon, old fashioned, actually really works. Uh, chicken soup with garlic and vegetables in it, or vegetable soup if a vegetarian with garlic in it, and garlic's vegetation, vegetarian, all good, with plenty of fresh herbs, rosemary, sage, thyme, immune supporting herbs. That's really, really good. Some additional vitamin C won't go wrong, and just for getting a decent night's sleep, because we're all there coughing and spluttering, some cough syrups, simple cough syrups, nothing complex, not too much. I mean, if it's chronic, fair enough, get something with paracetamol in it. But bear in mind, there's a lot of people around the world now becoming dependent and developing a drug habit around cough syrups and other medications, including painkillers. It's a lot more serious than people realise, so I want you to know about it. Just sharing. So, there's this rhinovirus, cough, splutter, all the rest of it. Really, as gym goers, as people looking after ourselves, what should we do? Now, first and foremost, most important, and I really want to emphasise this, because I see it happening all the time around me. And that is, we live in a modern culture that works on the clock, Time, showing commitment at your work, just soldiering on, just keep going and just ignore the symptoms because they're nothing but a nuisance. No. Absolutely not. Stop if you're sick. Too many people, and you'll see them in the gym, and I've been guilty of it myself, which is why I really want to emphasize this and highlight it to you. We're all guilty of feeling a bit under the weather, but because we are part of this fitness culture, ambient fitness culture online, and, and with social pressures to soldier on, beast mode, if you're not pushing to failure all the time, you're, 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 a, you're a lightweight. This is bullshit, by the way. And there's a lot of people getting injured because of it. Stop if you're sick. Viruses can often equate to physical injury. You don't want both at once. If we go to the gym and we try and lift heavy, when we've got a virus or a bacterial infection, the body has to split its resources. When we are well, the body can focus all the energy on the gains, on the lifting. When we are sick, the body needs more energy, more carbohydrates, more resources to generate the military defences inside of us to fight off these viruses, bacteria, and to help with physical injury recovery. But particularly with viruses, the body needs to use a lot more energy than we realise. And it needs the time and space and to be uninterrupted and, and, and being allowed to do so. So if you don't rest, if you, if, you, if, if you keep going at the gym, you're depleted, you've not got your focus, you greatly increase your risk of physical injury, which compounds and divides the body's own military immune, autoimmune system where it no longer has to fight off viruses or bacteria, it then has to displace resources to help with physical recovery from sprains, strains and, and, and other aches. So, rest equals recovery. The better the quality of rest, the better quality of recovery. And we need to be proactive in our rest. We need to take time off, lie in bed if it needs be, that's fine. There should be no social shaming about that. When people are sick, they need the time and space to recover. 
Sure, there's slackers out there, but if you're in your job, it's up to employers. It's employers' responsibility to know the difference. Time out prevents more sickness. Just what I was saying there. If we take the time out of the gym early on and with signs of infection, not only will we recover more quickly, but the quality of our recover and the rest that the body's experienced will actually re-energize our bodies to get better gains as and when we are ready to make them. Because we've dealt with the sickness first. Essentially we're helping the body to heal. It's the simple things. What we tend to do is what our mental focus is, is what's the medication, what's the supplements, what can the doctor prescribe me? Now that's got its place. But one thing at a time, gainers, take time out, drink plenty of water, get your honey and lemon, get loads and loads of sleep, and just eat clean food. Cancel your plans, cancel your social engagements, and go to bed. Read a good book. If you don't, more pain, less gain. It's true. I mean, I really don't have to explain that too much because it doesn't just apply to, you know, if we go to the, the gym when we are experiencing pain, it will impede our quality of gains. The longer that pain goes on, the longer the infection is allowed to be tolerated because we're not dealing with it, the longer it takes to recover and then make further gains in our fitness. So we're making less gains because we're just trying to battle on through and not be realistic about the need for recovery under the circumstances, listening to what the body's telling us. Self-harm is self-hindrance. The more we disrupt and obstruct our healing process that the body needs, the more we are hindering the quality of our gains. People who become medicine dependent when there is no tangible reason and need for it are actually undermining long-term health and particularly with all the folk that are in bad diets that are not looking after proper rounded nutrition. Sickness in training causes injury. Again I'm, re I'm, re I'm going over something again here because it's really important so it's worth repeating that if we go and try and carry on doing athletic performance, training for an objective, and we are sick, we've got a viral infection or a bacterial infection, or we've got an injury, if we just try and battle through it and cover over it with painkillers, we are doing the worst possible thing we can possibly do to ourselves. And that is a fundamental act of self-disrespect. That's a good way of finishing. So, I'll leave it at that. See you soon, gainers. Pop back again, and hopefully, I won't be needing any more lemon and honey. It's quite nice, actually. Lemon and honey, and cough mixture, and hopefully I'll be properly over my coughs and sniffles. But in the meantime, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going back to bed to read a book. See you soon.